Hello and welcome back. I'm Lincoln. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to clone an existing brush in Nomad Sculpt and how to turn it into a versatile extrusion tool. Then using alphas, we will import text from Procreate into Nomad. I will then explain how to properly adjust your new brush to get the most out of it. Because I also have a couple of tips along the way to help you get the best results with your new tools. Okay, let's grab your iPad and let's get sculpting. First thing, we're going to get rid of this default spear. And we'll add a new box in here. Validate it. And we're going to go ahead and put this resolution up pretty high. And you'll see why using the, using the alphas like we are, you have to have pretty good resolution for it. Otherwise, they just come in all pixelated and jagged and they don't look right. So we're going to do that first. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you, you see all of these down here. These are all custom brushes I've made for different things. And you'll see I've got them all labeled for what they do. Now what we're going to do is make another extrude brush. So this one you can see that I've cloned them off certain brushes on purpose because they have the right characteristics already built into the brush on some of them. So we're going to grab the clay brush and we're going to double tap it and we'll just hit clone. And we'll name this Extrude 2. Okay, so now we have our new brush ready to go. Now we're going to go back out and go to Procreate and we'll make an alpha with some text on it and bring it in to so show you how easy this is to do. Um, you can do it with stamp, but I prefer making my own extrude brush because this is something with stamp, most of the time I leave most of these brushes fairly fairly basic. I don't mess with them a lot. I'll adjust things here and there. But these are all what I want them to actually do. And this way I can actually, I've already made the brush fall off how I like for different kinds of stamping. So we're going to go out and go into Procreate real quick. Now, if you're not familiar with Procreate, it's super easy to use. The plus sign right here is how we make a new, a new canvas. You can see here, I've already got this set up, but I'm going to show you how to do this as well because it, it's kind of nice to have it all set up. So all you got to do is click on it and you have a canvas. So we'll click up here for a new canvas type. Go ahead and name it. We'll just say Nomad. You can do name it however you want. But we'll come down here. You always want this 500 by 500 pixels. It makes no difference if you go up to 1,000 or 2,000 pixels. Each way, it doesn't make any difference. 500 is fine and it doesn't overload anything. So we've got a name, we've got your pixel sizes. The only other thing we really need to mess with is canvas properties, and we'll click on that. And I like to go ahead and change the background color so I don't have to do that every time. And you just double tap down here on the black, and it'll give you a black background every time. So if we hit create, if you hit it again, there we go. Now this is this is already in here, but I'm going to show you how to make a stack as well because it's also really nice. I always put all my alphas in a stack. That way I can just click in and just grab another alpha or change it into something else if I want. So what we'll do is we'll just grab up here. Now here's your new one. Now if you wanted to move this in here, you just click and drag it up. So we just put it here. Click on it. I'll make another one. We'll go back to the gallery. Now if we put this on here it'll go blue it'll turn into a stack in a second click on that and now we're inside and then once you're in the stack oops that's not what i wanted to do you can just click on nomad on that one again and you've got another one so this is already has it all set up it's black it's 500 pixels it's ready to go to make alphas if you need to change anything if you wanted to change the background color for some reason you just come here or whatever you want okay this is your layers palette eraser smudge brush your color palette obviously your color wheel and then your brush size and your opacity here and then these are all your tools there's a lot of tools in all of these so this is your actual move selection tool, move tool selection tool all your special adjustments you can do and we'll use Gaussian Blur a lot in the next few tutorials so you can see how to use that. Okay, so what we're going to do is add text. So you hit the wrench icon and we're going to go to add and add text. 
Now you can just move the box around with your finger like this. Don't use your pencil or it'll try to draw in the box. Now that you have your keyboard up, I usually just go, um, first thing, if you want to change the size, which we're going to change the size, you have to delete there first. So you go in here and we'll do, let's do something fairly thick. I'll do this one. Okay, go to the keyboard and do bold, bold text. Okay, you click out here, that'll, that'll finish your selection process. You go in here, we'll add text again. Let's add like three in here so you can kind of see what this can do. Go in here so you don't feel like you're so you don't feel like you're stuck with a heavy font or anything you can do just about anything um, like font okay and one more just somewhere something kind of in between maybe I'll bring that down delete it and then how about something yeah there we go Something to really show off that you can do anything in here. I got a, yeah, there it is. This one right here. This will really show that you can do just about anything you want. Okay. So that's three good fonts. Whoops. Okay. So all you have to do, this is already white and black. So if you had some gray in here, if we were to do a gray box, this would be in between. If we were to do a select a rectangle selection. So if you do something like that, oh man, I crash it. Sometimes that happens. It doesn't do it very often anymore, but every once in a while it'll crash on me. So this layer, we'll go to that layer and do the rectangle select. And always happens, sometimes does it with the font. I don't know exactly why. Okay. Color fill. So in this, in this what you're seeing here, the black would be what your model is, whatever you're sculpting on. The white is the highest it can go. And any of any color of gray is going to be in between that. So we don't really need that for anything. So we'll just get rid of it, delete it. Okay. Now that we have these, we're going to, I'm going to grab all of these and then move, just move them to the center. Oh, that's right. This one only does it one at a time. There. Okay. All right. So that's all we have to do. We're going to go into the wrench icon. We're going to go to canvas, canvas info. And we'll just do test text. Okay. And then we hit share. JPEG. Now here you just find wherever you got to go, save to files, and you want it to be, if this is closed, you want some fine nomad in your set and your setup, hit alphas and save it to alphas. Okay, we're done with that. We'll go back into nomad. Oh, so to be able to import those, we need to close that down first. So close that and then reopen it and you'll get this saying that it's loading those files for you. Now I'm going to show you one quick little tip. This is pretty cool. The, the new axes they have on here. So if we go in and hit the gizmo, you can get these where they'll, they'll just poke through. It's kind of nice. It's on a center now. So you know that you're in the center of your, of your object. Now that we have our new extrude brush, click this open. These two and mostly the brush icon right here is the one you want to be in. So our new alpha is going to be right here. The scaling. So just to understand what we need to go over a few things. This is your scale and that red circle is what will actually stamp. So if you go like that, you'd lose everything outside of the edge of the red circle. So one is like your default where it always brings your brings everything in. It, it's assumed one scale you can always go smaller if you want or bring it right up to the edge if you need to but we'll just leave it at one 
rotation you can turn it around if you need to mid value is kind of a weird thing it'll end up bringing like that gray that we i showed you it'll do that actually on its own it's it's kind of hard to deal with though you can also tile if you want to and this is on the x if you do y it'll tile all of those and you can see where it would be right there so we'll just go turn tiling off you scale back up to one okay now fall off so i'll show you what happens with these different fall offs so this is the preset this is the this is a different one that you can set yourself custom which is really nice i use that a ton and this is just splines but you can get a little bit more a little bit more out of it if you want to i usually just use this one because I'll, I'll just add a couple more dots now those black ones are square so you can see that goes to a sharp edge if i click on it it'll go round same thing so these are pretty cool and you can add as many as you want they'll get to a point though if they're if it's red if it goes to a red it's just going to suck into itself so you can just delete them as you want get rid of that so for to use the like the stock one like that say it's something well that's the stock so if we do that and we have this in we're on our extrude brush turn off symmetry we don't need that we don't need more than one um gotta do one more thing let's pin this so we can keep it open so down here, there's one other thing we need to do, stroke type. And that's the reason I pick the brush icon for this particular extrude brush. The dot is how you paint, like you would paint something on or drag something across the surface. Dynamic radius, you can click and pull just like that. You can see there, that turned out pretty nice and that's way extreme. We don't want it that tall, but that's that turned out right. Now that does the radius and intensity you notice when we click intensity that that goes away on the slider so it's set so it's only going to be whatever size it is so that's you change the radius by that and it'll be set for whatever now you see how that's all peaked up that's because of this if we were to change the preset to say this do the same thing now it's just going to come up straight up for you now this is the other reason I pick this clay brush for this because you'll notice if you come over here I just pull straight out of the surface it goes extrude straight out wherever you're at now this one didn't and I'll show you why if you use this particular extrude brush you can see this circle right here if that circle goes over breaks over an edge when you pull up it's gonna go that direction because it's pulling towards these surface normals. If you're on the flat surface, it'll come straight up for you. So it's super handy. I really like using this a lot of times because you don't have to be looking straight on. You can be off at the side and pull this at will wherever you want. And it's always gonna come straight up for you. So I really like that for this reason. Now I have another one, the teeth brush. That one's different. That one's actually me. You can see that one's made off the move brush. And that one is a little, that one depends on the camera angle, but it's kind of nice because if you're sculpting on something and you want to extrude something out of it, you can't always be on the surface normal. So that's kind of nice. The, this particular extrude brush is nice for that. Okay, so to get this a little more under control, because that's, that's getting a little crazy. We don't want text that tall, obviously. Get rid of that. And you also see too, you see this other, you see that circle around there? It may be really faint on camera, but that circle right there is because you're pulling the entire thing up on the fall off. So if we come in here, we can adjust all of this way easier. So this is all the way across your stamp. So if we come down, you only adjust half of it. You can only adjust half your stamp. But if we put one there and do this, now when we pull up, you can see as we adjust, you can see it has an edge right there. So we don't really want that either. So let's get rid of all these. And we'll just come up just straight up like this. Now, if you're not, whoops, if you're not getting too crazy with it, you can still see that we have we have that that halo out there. So that's easy enough to fix. You just come down and just barely bump that up, and you'll get rid of it. And that halo around your stamp is gone and that can be kind of annoying sometimes 
Now this is normally not what I want. I don't want, if you want the same size every time, this is, this is how you do it. So you can set that how you want. Now, if you want that a little bit less, you get down right there where it's just above and you've got a nice clean text. Okay. Now, obviously if you want to engrave it in, hit sub right there. And now you're cutting it in instead. You can see the text is really clean. It looks really good. Okay, so the other one is the dynamic intensity, and that just makes it, or radius rather, that just makes it larger, however, whatever size you want. All right. So it's easy to line up. And like I said, you can use these crosshairs. Like now you want to go pull right on the center. And now you can line your font up across like that if you want. You can see it's nice and straight. So it's a nice easy tip. Now if that's just about it for this. I'm going to go into another one where I'm going to show you how to do the extrude line. And that's like you want to pull a line of rivets or fasteners or anything, rope. I'll show you how to do that on the next tutorial. I have something for that in mind. All right, so that's it for putting font in your on your objects in here. Super easy to do, as you can see. And if you wanted to actually, I'll show you one other thing real quick. If you actually wanted to make some text and cut it cut it off, so you can definitely bring this in like this. Actually, we need to make it. A, let's make that a little thicker. Obviously, let's go back in. There we go. Go up like this because we need any little text. I need some meat on this. That's a little too much. Intensity down. So it's it's a fine line. You can use the fall off in the in the menu. You can use your intensity over here. You can see there that looks that looks pretty good. So now if you wanted to cut that off, you can bring this over to the left. And if you want to, if you need to bring this back into the world like you want, like it was originally. Click on the gizmo tool, click on the, on this, on that menu, hit move origin. And now you are back on the origin. If you, if that's something you need to do. So if you want to cut this off, you can just trim this off if you want, or you can split it either way. It doesn't really matter if we split, we'll grab the rectangle. That's the easiest one to do. Come over just like right there. And it'll take a second because this topology is so heavy and high. Your iPad is going to take a second to get, get to this. Now let's go ahead and clear the mask. Oh, I'm going to select this item. Clear the mask. Clear. Okay. So now you can see that that text is a different color. So if we go in here, you have the box and the box split. So if we go to the box split, still saving now you have text that you can put on or in anything you want to do if this video helped you at all please like and subscribe i have many more on the way all right i'll see you next time